I think um, recognizing that I did sit on the commission, I have a few observations to make, and I think I'm just going to up, I'm going to observe them in the context of the way the motion was laid. The motion said, um, whereas the honorable members are mindful of the contents of the report of the Tax Reform Commission 2018, be it resolved that this honorable house carefully consider both the contents and the implications of the said report. And I think it's important that we talk about the implications because sometimes you, you're busy looking at the content and you don't realize that the implications are what's going to really be the, the operative word because once it's out there, it's up to the Minister of Finance to decide what, if any, and how much of any of the, the recommendations he wants to implement. And that's why I am just going to concentrate just for a few minutes on what I believe are implications because I recognize that when the, um, when the finance minister put together the commission, there were some parameters that were put and I think it's important for us here and also for Mr. and Mrs. Bermuda to understand that, you know, th there were some guidelines. There were some guidelines that, that we had to help, um, help us address and deal with uh, all the vexing questions that we have to ask. And, and I'm just, if you could allow me, Mr. Speaker, just to observe a few things from the report. The, the questions that have to be considered, as it says in the report, are the following. Are the tax measures fair? Are they simple and easily understood? Do all the taxpayers contribute to the, their fair share to the public purse? Is the tax base broad and resilient enough to withstand global and local economic or other shocks to the system? And I think if you put that in the context of the commission that was then directed to go and look at the tax structure, look at the Bermuda economy and to come up with some recommendations, at least you can understand when you start to read the report again how some of these things were developed. We were very fortunate in being able to reach out and to Mr. and Mrs. Bermuda, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Business Bermuda, the ABIC, the ABEAR, the, the retail sections, and even encourage other people to come um, who were not, if you will, in, in what I call the established business um, organizations, to be able to come and talk to um, the issues that were important to them. We also tried to go out and, and have consultations with the under 35s, the young people that are out there that potentially will be impacted by this because we don't know when the finance minister is going to pull the lever, and I call all these things levers, and how much of each lever he's going to pull. Because the bottom line is every, every one of these things, although we put a number there, every one of these things is something that could be operated and just by changing it from 5% to, to 6% or 7%, you can, you can double the number and you can decide that you get rid of one, one potential tax and you have something else. So I'm not suggesting that the finance minister is going to say that certain one of these things are going to be implemented over something else. I think we have to understand that it's a, if you will, it's a landscape that the finance minister can look at and say, what do I want to implement based on some of the other parameters that, are going, that he's going to face at the time? And I say some of the other parameters because the bottom line is it, that it's, it's important to understand that we have a choice. We have, a, we have what I call a consumption-based economy. Our tax system here is based on yeah, what, what you consume, whether it be um, the, the, the goods that come in that are subject to duty, or whether it be, uh, whether it be um, when you're going abroad, whether it also be the sort of the land tax. Some of these things are more what I call consumption-based rather than income tax. Now, we know that in some other countries, there is a mix of income tax and consumption. And in the past, I think we've always been able to say to ourselves that we could stand up and we could say proudly that Bermuda doesn't have income tax. But... I think you'd also have to acknowledge, although you don't have income tax, there are ways in which tax has been, cre tax has been collected, mm -hmm. and in some, re in some respects, it's a form of saying tax on something that you've earned and therefore your income. But I think we've proudly been able to say that to people abroad that have income tax where they sit down and they fill out 
everything that they own, everything that they earn, and they have dollars. So we we have trekked trekked this fine line, and I think, Mr. Speaker, that what this report says is that it it reminds us reminds us that the majority of developed economies have a com combination of taxes on income and taxes on consumption, and all it's doing is is making Bermuda and the minister aware of different um, types of consumption tax or different types of income tax that he can decide to either increase or reduce and as I say before that he can he can decide based on what he has to achieve in terms of the amount of revenue that he has to he has to try and find in any one year or in any one period that he can decide which pieces of it now um, I think it's important for us to, to recognize that when we had the conversation in terms of the tax commission, and we said it right in our report, we did not get into a discussion on how, what government spending, how, the gov how efficient the government was in its spending, and also what types of money the government needed to achieve, because that is something that the finance minister of the day is going to have to, when he decides to introduce any of these taxes, He's going to have to say to the people of Bermuda, I need to raise this amount of money, and this is why I need to raise it. And the people of Bermuda over, all the time have to be looking at the government and have to be looking at the government and saying, how efficient are you, government? Where are you spending our money on? Do we feel we're getting value for money? And are we happy then in you telling us that you're going to introduce this tax and you're going to, and you're going to increase this one and lower this other so it's still in the hands of the finance minister, but it also is in the hands of the people from the perspective of revenues, government revenues have always been raised to take care of government programs. And always the people of Bermuda should be looking at the revenues that have been raised and how efficient and how well they've been spent. And that's why when you talk about in the report and also in the, in the fiscal, in the fiscal um, responsibility panel, you see people, like our tax commission said that we have not opined on how efficient government is or how much revenue they need to achieve. But we understood the relationship between raising revenue and spending. And also the, um, the fiscal responsibility panel said very clearly that it's important for um, the government to understand that um, if they don't start to pay attention to the efficiencies, the government efficiencies, that they're going to have some negative knock-on effect with respect to the people of Bermuda. We said, and I know, the, I know that it's been said even more clearly, that another, another paramount issue is the question of the deficit of the country and the deficit and the amount of debt that we have. We had, we had, to, we had to at least recognize that it was there because if we didn't recognize that it was there, we wouldn't be recognizing, one, why the commission was being given a directive to raise a certain amount of GDP, a certain amount of revenue to, to a certain level of GDP. But I'm saying that when, you, when you're up tasked to do that, you have to recognize that the other side of the lever potentially is be more efficient and then you don't have to have as much revenue. So I think that... Um, we, 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 we know that we can't do anything, as it says in the report, that we didn't want the risk of, of, of a, a downgrade. And I think the, the, the point that, that we want to make, and I, for me personally, I think this is something that's been very, very strong from my perspective, is that unless you get more people on the island, unless we start to grow the, the base on which the taxes are, the taxes are, are the, the people that are being taxed, then all you're doing is you're turning around and, and, and what you're saying is that the small, the small base that you have there, more people have to pay more. The same number of people have to pay more in mm -hmm. order to get the higher amount. And you, have, and you know that if you don't want to do that, the bottom line says get more people and you can spread it around and everybody pays less. And I know that very carefully, and I, and, I, and, I, and I say because I know that when I, we started to look at health, that we were going along, we had a, a, a bigger base of individuals that were sharing the, the, tax, the health expenditure, and it meant that the premiums could go down because the, the, the expenditure was spread around. It's the same, the same 
principle with respect to Texas. If you can get more people in here, and I say more people in here by growing businesses, by having, by having people here who can employ Bermudians, because the bottom line is you want people to be on the island, you want Bermudians to be employed, and you want them to be paying payroll tax because they have a job, as opposed to not being able to payroll tax or, or paying, paying payroll tax on a shrinking, on a, on a shrinking of revenue and therefore feeling, how can I make ends meet? Mm -hmm. So we, we know that, it, that it's important. And so when I hear each one of us talking and saying to the finance minister the fact that we, we believe that it's important when he looks at all of this to be reminded of the fact that these levers are just opportunities to raise revenue, but more people having, um, having your tax base, if it's increased by the people that are working here, then it makes it easier and it also makes it fairer for people in Bermuda. Because the other side of this, we, when we talked about this, was the whole the question of trying to make it fair and try, trying to make it equitable. And um, it is difficult when you start trying to go from a system that's in place to try and potentially look at another system. And I think if you start to look at what the tax commission is saying that in some cases there has been an indication if you read, if you read some, of the, um, some of the information that's in this book, there is a suggestion that you might have one type of tax and let's just say you're talking about the, the tax on terms of land tax, that's a tax on, your, uh, on your, your property, but the other tax, which is the tax on your, your rental income, so I heard people sort of saying that's double taxation. Well, anything that, anything that you have as a tax, it doesn't matter. A tax is a tax. And if you, start to tra if you start to say reducing one and increasing another, the bottom line in the end is that you're supposed to be revenue generation. And some taxes, when we start talking about consumption and some taxes when you start talking about income, they, they potentially can go after the same, the same item but they're, di they're, they're different direction in which you're trying to look at it. You're, you're trying to look at something that says that on the one hand it's a consumption and on the other hand it's income. So that I think that we have to, we have to understand that um, the, the other concern that has been, been raised, and I say that because I know that from the commission's point of view and I also know that from the perspective of the fiscal responsibility panel, it does not make any sense for us to start to make suggestions of collecting tax or raising, rev raising revenue if we're not able to make sure that the taxes are collected. And you see in, in, the, in, the, um, in, the, in the commission booklet, there is a, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of a lot of information has been put out in terms of the, the fact of the Office of the Tax Commissioner how, how is it going to be structured? How is it going to be able to, to, to um, make sure that it can collect these taxes? Because I have, I have a, uh, something that I say, and I say often because it's coming from my, from my auditing days, that you have a single point of failure. And what that means is if there's something that regardless of what you do, when it gets to that point, it fails, then we always look around and people making changes to systems and, they, and the point where it fails is still there in the middle, and therefore you've gone all around thinking you've done something really great, but the single point of failure is still in the middle, which means that you've made all sorts of changes and nothing, nothing good is going to come out mm -hmm. of it because the failure is there. And that's why I think it's important for us to understand that the Office of the Tax Commissioner is very important. Now, there's, the suggestions are here being made the fact of to consolidate consolidate departments that are collecting tax because the bottom line is in most cases the, the, the individual, it's, a, it's an individual who's there that is being taxed on, in many, many ways, whether it be the, the tax that you pay because you're, you're having a car, whether it's the tax that, that you pay with respect to, to being able to um, get, a, get a license um, to, to have property or the tax that you pay to be able to have an uh, Airbnb, all of these things are forms of taxation. And, and when I look at it from this perspective, I don't differentiate between the types. All I say is that it's the government of the day figuring out of a way to collect money from its citizens 
to generate the revenues to pay for all of the expenses, all of the services that they have to offer. And so if you start looking at the fact that if we start focusing on individuals, then you will see that if someone keeps track of an individual and everything that they have to pay, whether it be a social insurance or payroll tax, they keep track of all of these things, they will be able to see how when people get behind, when people start to owe money to government, and then you will start to see that it's important for us not to put in new taxes, which are either overly complex or they have, they have a difficulty in collections. Because um, if you generate all this money and you don't have it, then government can't use these monies to turn around and pay, pay their bills or pay their staff. So that um, when, when I started, when you started to look at the fiscal responsibility um, panel, which I think it was fortuitous that the, um, that the report be, be tabled just at the time when this was, this was, um, this report, our report was being discussed, I think we have to recognize is that um, some of the things here we'll be able to compare to what's happening in other jurisdictions, and, we'll, and the finance minister will have to make his decision on whether he believes it's appropriate or not. But I think the, the bottom line that we all have to keep work, working towards is the fact that the amount of tax that any finance minister will have to raise will be directly related to the expenditure that um, he is having to cover, and the more efficient a finance minister could be, then it means the better, um, the less tax that he will have to, to raise, and therefore by, um, by, by, by as, an, as an automatic um, byproduct of that, then it means its citizens, its, his citizens will have to pay less tax and be happier people. And I, and I think that we all want to make sure that there's a, there's a fair, fair, fairness here. And when you started to look at some of the exemptions that have been put in place, some of these exemptions have been put in place, one based on information that talks about people at the lower end of the scale and, and making sure that if they're not able, if, they're, if, if they are already struggling to make ends meet, then why would, should we add the burden? Why should we burden them? And therefore, that's why some of the exemptions have been put forward. Also, I think there's, there's a belief that when you start looking at fairness, um, you know, there is some people that sort of talk about person's ability to pay versus um, person's um, ability to be able to um, pay more. And I, and I know that we've had discussions from the point of view of, leaving, from the point of, view of health where it's been suggested that should everybody pay the same for health? And I, and I knew with put my former health minister hat on, I've had some people come and say, well, I don't, want to have, I don't want to have government subsidy because I can pay for it. I would much prefer to have people who can't pay it have the money. And I think over time, I actually do believe most people in Bermuda want fairness. I think most people in Bermuda feel that they're, they're not their brother's keeper, but, they, but they, they understand that if someone is genuinely working and trying to, to make ends meet and, 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 and they're not able to, and they, they should be able to be given some sort of benefit so that their family can be able to, to live properly on the island. And because we want everybody on this island who are making a contribution to be able to say, well, the, the system works for me and at least, at least I can feel that I'm, as long as I'm a contributor, then I, I am being treated fairly. So I think, Mr. Speaker, what I, what I want to say is the fact that um, I'll be intrigued to see how the finance minister makes, um, make, makes some decisions. And as I said, going back from when I started from the beginning, the implications of this is something that's important. It's important for him and us to understand that, as I say, all of these things are options. They're options for the, for the finance minister to decide whether he's going to actually um, implement all or none, some of this part of it in greater numbers or, or lesser numbers. But it does come down to the fact that if you look at, um, if you look at what the fiscal responsibility um, panel said, and if you allow me, Mr. Mr. Speaker, just to, just to say two things. Um, 
the, the um, panel said that we would be cautious in assuming that the time frames envisioned by the TRC, essentially 18 to 24 months for most of the policy reforms are realistic. And also, um, they also made the suggestion that, and as we said before, that the Office of the Tax Commissioner would need, need so much, um, so many more staff. And the last thing I think, which I think I have recognized and most of us probably will have to do, most of the proposals are perhaps best seen as steps towards an eventual move to a more conventional system of income and sales taxation. Now, I don't know, I mean, that's something Bermuda has to say. We've, all, we've always said that we would never have ta income tax, but I remember when my leader was talking about sales taxation as being a fairer way of having people pay, paying for um, the tax at the time of sale. You know, as I say, the, if, you, if you look at these, look at this last statement, it just raises something very interesting from the perspective of um, a step towards uh, an eventual move to a more conventional system of income and sales taxation. So I think, Mr. Speaker, that um, the, the, um, the report is there, the, the contents are there, and it's the implica impl implications of this report is going to be something that the finance minister will have to look at. And I think Bermuda and all of us will be looking to, for him to come back and tell us over time which pieces he will start to use and why, but I think the bottom line is that we really do need more jobs and we need an efficient government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.